Welcome to the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast, powered by Jetro. Each week, we bring extremely valuable accounting and tax tips specific to small business owners. You will be on your way to growing your business and putting more money in your pockets. Here's your host. Hello, and welcome back to another episode. Today's topic is what options are available to business owners with high medical costs. Now, before we get into that, I want to remind you that registration is now open for our Small Business Tax Savings Summit. This is going to be a virtual two-day, 12-hour event where you will walk away rejuvenated with ideas and implementation steps to lower your tax bill immediately and pay the least amount in taxes as legally possible. We are holding this June 14th and 15th of 2022, and if you sign up before November 30th this year, you're going to receive $150 off. Also, one thing to note is that the Tax Savings Summit is free to tax minimization program members. So if you're a current tax minimization program member, the summit is included. If you're not, either become a tax minimization program member or sign up for the summit and get $150 off if you sign up before November 30th. You can learn more at taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash summit. I'm super excited for this event. Also, one final reminder, don't forget to join our Facebook group. Go to Small Business Tax, go to Facebook, type in Small Business Tax Secrets, and there you can join our free Facebook group. Again, today's topic is what options are available to business owners with high medical costs? And this is actually the third episode in our healthcare mini series. And let's face it, sometimes life hits you and medical costs rise higher than you would have ever hoped for. Now, fortunately for those business owners out there, there may be some options available to get a tax savings from it. Now, before we go into any further into that, I want to be clear. What we are discussing here is medical costs over and above health insurance. If you have not already checked out our first two episodes, do so now. The first episode was how does the deduction for self-employed health insurance work? So that's going to talk about that health insurance cost. And then the second episode was what is an HSA and how do they work? So again, what we're talking about today is high medical costs, and this would be over and above that actual health insurance cost. You should already be taking care of that health insurance cost, as we kind of discussed in the first episode of our series. Now, if after that you still have high medical costs, that's what we're going to be talking about today. One final key note is that this specific episode is related to those small business owners that do not have other employees. This would be for solo business owners only, which is themselves or as a spouse as an employee. We're going to be talking about uh, options available for those of you that do have employees in next week's episodes. So what we're going to be talking about today is something called a Section 105 Medical Reimbursement Plan or Health Reimbursement Arrangement. So the first thing is, is what is a Section 105 plan? If you qualify, a Section 105 plan basically turns personal medical expenses into a business deduction. Again, a Section 105 plan is an opportunity to turn personal medical expenses into into a business deduction if you qualify. Now, how do you qualify for a Section 105 plan? There's two main items. One, you have only one employee, so that employee would be you or your spouse. And two, you operate your business as one of the following. A sole proprietorship, which is where you file your tax return on a Schedule C on your personal tax return, or a partnership, which is where you file your tax return on a Form 1065, You have a rental property, which would be uh, reported on Schedule E of your personal tax return, or you have a C corporation, which is reported on Form 1120. So to qualify for a Section 105 plan is that you have only one employee and you operate your business as a sole proprietorship, a partnership, you have a rental property, or a C corporation. Now, how does a Section 105 plan work? For a Section 105 plan, you would need to ensure that you have the correct paperwork and plan designed, and this is key. Having this set up correctly is important to make sure that we ensure that we can keep this deduction. But then it would simply be reimbursing the employee for medical costs incurred. Now, the employee in this situation would be either you, if you're single, or your spouse. Now, there's a key distinction on how you treat this program or how this program works depending on if you're single or or married. 
So if you single, if you're single, you'd have to be operating your business as a C corporation to take advantage of this. And you would have the company provide Section 105 benefits to you as the employee of a C corporation. So if you are single and you have high medical costs and you want to take advantage of a Section 105 plan, you'd have to be operating your business as a C corporation and you would be the employee of that C corporation receiving Section 105 benefits. If you're married, you would need to hire your spouse as the employee in the business and have the plan reimburse your spouse for the medical expenses incurred. Now, one cool thing about this is that the reimbursement would include expenses for all of the following. The employee, who which would be your spouse. The employee's spouse, which happens to be you. The employee's dependents, which would be your children. And any, uh, any child of the employee that's under the age of 27. So basically, if you're married, you'd hire your spouse in your business, and the Section 105 plan would cover this, your spouse, your spouse's spouse, which would be you, and your children or your dependents. Once you have it set up and the correct employee chosen, whether you're single or married and the type entity type that you need to be operating out of, you would reimburse them for medical expenses incurred, turning these into deductible business expenses, which you would then record as employee welfare benefits on the bookkeeping. So let's go through an example of this. It, it, this is a, a complex subject and I wanted to kind of give a high level overview of it. So let's go through an example to help this make sense a little bit more. Let's say you're operating your business as a sole proprietorship and you have high medical costs. You would need to ensure that you hired your spouse in the business and then develop a section 105 plan to reimburse your employee, aka your spouse and their family, which would be you and your children. So let's say you have 15000 in medical expenses, and that's this would be over and above health insurance. And let's just imagine you're in the 24% tax bracket. By setting up a Section 105 plan, you'd be able to save over $5,800 in taxes utilizing the setup, and that's before even considering possible state taxes. You could also be in a higher tax bracket. That could be even more. So that's where the tax savings are on this. Now, there's a few things that we want to consider when we're looking at a Section 105 plan. First off, you need to ensure that this is set up correctly or the deduction could be deemed invalid. If you're operating as a sole proprietor, the tax law does not consider you an employee of your business, which, which is why, if you're a sole prop, we need to hire the spouse in order to make this work. If you hire your spouse, they must actually be doing work in your business, and they must actually be doing the amount of work and at the right pay rate that would make sense for the reimbursement that you're making. So let's say the reimbursement is a total of $20,000. If you're hiring your spouse, your house, your spouse would have to be doing work in the business that would make sense for that $20,000 payment that they're receiving. If you have other employees in your business, you would not want to do a Section 105 plan and would instead look at other HRA options. And these are the ones that we're going to be talking about on next week's episode. So if you are if you have businesses uh, that you have other employees on, you're going to want to be sure to turn in next week where we talk about options there. If you have multiple businesses, you would need to consider the employees in all of both you and your spouse's businesses. So if you have one business with no employees, but another business with 10 employees, you would not qualify for the Section 105 as you would need to implement this type of plan in both of your businesses, including the one with employees as well, which is why we'd look to another option. Another thing is you may have noticed that we did not mention an S-Corp as a qualifying business. And if you know us, we talk about S-Corps a lot and the tax advantages to them. So if you operate your business as an S-Corp, you may need to consider a workaround as you would not be able to do a Section 105 plan within an S corporation. So that's where we might look at taking part of your business and turning it into a sole proprietorship or taking part of your business and turning it into a C corporation. So you'd have an S corporation, but then you would also have a sole proprietorship or a C corporation that you could then do a section 105 plan out of. So as you can tell, this stuff can get fairly complicated, especially considering the various documents you would need to get set up um, or, or some of the type of workarounds that you might need to do, depending on how your entity structure is organized. So I just kind of want to go through this again in, in kind of a high level overview. A Section 105 plan is basically a way to turn personal medical expenses into a business deduction. 
And to qualify for it, you would need to have just one employee or, or no employees outside of you or your spouse. And then two, you would need to operate your business as either a sole proprietorship, uh, a rental property that you might have, a partnership that you might be a part of, or a C corporation. No, we did not mention S corporation. If you're operating as an S corporation, you would need to do some type of workaround to be able to set up or, or have a sole proprietorship or a C corporation or something like that, a rental property where you would be doing the Section 105 plan out of. Basically, how a Section 105 plan is, is it reimburses an employee, the employee in the business, for medical expenses incurred. It's a reimbursement plan for them. If you are single, you must be operating as a C corporation. And that C corporation would then have you as an employee. If you're single operating as a sole proprietorship, you would not be able to hire yourself as an employee because the tax law does not look at you as an employee. So if you're operating your business as a sole proprietorship and you want to take advantage of this, you'd have to do a workaround where you have at least part of your business going through a C corporation. Now, if you're married, you would hire your spouse as the employee. So if you're married and operating as a sole proprietorship, you wouldn't be the employee because again, tax law does not recognize you as an employee, but your spouse could be the employee and then you would re reimburse your spouse for the medical expenses incurred. The cool thing about this is that if set up correctly, your plan can cover the employee, which would be your spouse, uh, your employee's spouse, which would be you, and any kind of dependents or children under the age of 27 that you might have. So you can hire, if you're set up as a sole proprietorship, you're married, you can hire your spouse in your business, and this plan can cover both your spouse, you, and any children that you might have. And again, once you have it set up correctly, you have the right entity, you have the right employee decided, you can reimburse them for medical expenses incurred, turning these medical expenses into a business expense which you would then use as a kind of an employee welfare benefits when you're doing your bookkeeping. Really good tax savings here. Again, this is if you have higher medical costs, a few kind of workarounds you have to do with hiring a spouse and things like that, but it's definitely worth the work. If you again have those high medical costs that we can turn into a business deduction. Again, if we just pay those expenses out of our, our, our checking account, our personal checking account, we're not going to get any tax deduction for it. Now, there might be some itemized, but that's going to be a high level amount in order to take advantage of that. We kind of talked about that in the last episode. So this is definitely something that we can take care of. And again, a couple things. We need to make sure that this is set up correctly. Otherwise, the deduction may not be valid. Um, and if you're hiring your spouse, so if you're married and hiring your spouse in your business, the spouse must actually be doing work in your business that, that makes sense for the amount of money that you're paying for them. If you happen to have other employees, again, this type of plan is for those business owners that have no other employees in other businesses. It's just them and maybe their family, their spouse, uh, but no other employees. If you have employees, you're going to want to tune into next week's episode where we talk about the potential there. And this is going to be a great episode for those business owners out there that have employees and just have been struggling with this healthcare piece and how, what do they offer to them? So be sure to tune in to that. Again, you may have noticed as a qualifying option, S Corp is not a qualifying business. So if you're operating as an S corporation, we're going to need to do a workaround where we have a sole proprietorship for part of our business or a C Corp. We kind of talked about that. If you're single operating as an S corporation, if you're single operating as a sole proprietorship, there may need to be a workaround. So as we kind of talked about, this stuff can be pretty complicated, especially, you know, the, the plan documents that need to be set up as well as some of the workarounds that may be required. Now, fortunately, we deep dive into this specific strategy in our tax minimization program. So if you want more information on this or you want plan documents, reimbursement request forms, timesheet examples, things like that, consider joining our tax minimization program which provides so many more benefits than just this one strategy, but this is a strategy that's included into it. You can find out more at taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash tax. And again, our tax minimization program includes a full library of tax saving strategies, training, templates to maximize your savings. You also have unlimited Ask a Pro access. So you have complete access to our team for general tax and accounting questions Basically, it's like having our team in your back pocket on this entrepreneurial journey. We also have monthly group training sessions where we deep dive into both baseline and advanced tax strategies. And then we also have an exclusive private Facebook group to help support your goals. So if you're interested in, in deep, deep diving into this, check out our tax minimization program. Again, it's taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash tax. 
I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode. And again, be sure to come back next week where we continue our healthcare mini series with our fourth episode in the series next week. Thanks again for listening to this episode, and I'll see you guys next week. This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast from the team at Jetro. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review on whatever platform you listen to us on and share with other business owners. If you have any questions or future topics you want to hear, email them to tax at jetrotax.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.